Okay, so I'm going to do the next poem now. I'm going to try to do this one really fast. You can play the YouTube video a little slower if you have to, but I'm worried about uh, space on the computer. So here now we're studying, again, the unit sphere. So I'm just going to draw the unit sphere in blue over here so we can talk about it. All right, and we are considering the point on the unit sphere. I'll use black most of the time. It's only for the drawing that I'm using blue. Um, with our point P is the point 100, which is right over here. So that's our point P. And we're going to find the normal to P. Now we found the normal to P in the past. So our normal in this case is actually equal to 100. We've done this in the past and it's very easy to see that it's 100. So our A equals 1, our B equals 0, and our C equals 0. So H of X, Y, Z is 1X plus 0Y plus 0Z is just plain X. All right. Now what's interesting about H of X, Y, Z is I've deliberately chosen it to be like the formula for the tangent plane. The tangent plane would be AX plus BY plus CZ equals AX naught plus BY naught plus CZ naught, where X naught, Y naught, Z naught is the point that we're interested in. So this is giving the tangent plane. So this, this formula is H of XYZ is actually going to equal 1 at P. I just want to draw the level set so you can see it a little better. H of XYZ is going to equal 1 times 1 plus, okay, at P. So H equals 1 right here. A, H at P equals 1. Let me just write that here. H at P equals 1. And then you'll take this plane and you're going to intersect it at various different levels with the sphere. So you're going to end up with these circles and so on. So it's different than the Z one. You're going to have these circles coming out from this P. And I deliberately chose this. We've already studied the case where we were doing down from the top. So it's really the same idea now, or, or going X like this, but I wanted to look at it head on so you'd see these circles around it. So you see that these circles where um, our H intersects with the sphere. The reason that they're circle shapes is because our spheres, levels, intersections with planes are circles. Now, if you have a different surface, the spheres intersections with the planes will look different, and we'll see that in the next example. So right now we have these surface levels, and h equals 1 at p, and then as you go backwards, h decreases. So actually h over here, this is the h equals 0 level, and this will be, say, like the h equals half level, and this will be the h equals two-thirds level, and then you get h equals 1 right here. Okay? So these are our different levels of h, and so when we find the gradient of h, we're going to see that there should be a max at p. We can see from the picture that there is a max at p. Max of h at p is visible just from the picture. This is a, a graphical conclusion that I see that there's a max of h at p, and now we're going to figure out the gradient, and we're going to see that the gradient of h better be 0 over there where there's a max. So let's just we have h of x, y, z equals x. I need to find a ch we need to use a chart when we're finding the gradient. The interesting, um, we're, we're going to be finding this gradient. The gradient is going to be tangent vectors, and they're going to point tangent, and they're going to have to point towards the increasing. So these are what the gradients are going to look like. So if, say, P is uh, um, Italian, so I'll just say, suppose P is Rome, then all, all arrows point toward Rome. Okay, so you can think of it that way. And if you have another culture, like if it's Mecca or wherever, okay? So all the arrows point exactly towards the gradient H are these vectors that are pointing towards the P. So that's the gradient H pointing toward the P. If I want to study um, gradient H using charts, we would use various charts, we'd set it up. Let me just do one of the charts where, um, so let's use the chart where we solve for x, um, because that would be a nice chart in this direction. We've studied it many times, so I'm not going to rework out how we choose our charts. We use implicit function theorem. So we're going to chart solving for x. We get um, f of y, z equals, if I solve the, the formula for a sphere, for x, we're going to get square root 1 minus y squared minus z e squared y z. And then our dy chart, we already figured out many, many times. And um, we have to figure out our gij's. So you have to look up the dy. Sorry, this is y. 
chart dy and gijs. And after you do that, you're going to figure out g of our grad h in terms of each one of these, g of grad h x2, and you're going to figure out exactly the formula for the different components, just as we did for the last one, and you'll solve um, for the two components, uh, I'll say A1, H1, H2, so this is H1, and this is H2, you're going to get that H1 and H2 equal the inverse G11, G12, G21, G22 inverse matrix. We have to find that inverse matrix times um, the answers to um, x1 derivative of h and x2 derivative of h. And you have to do all this work. So it's a lot of work to figure this out. I'm actually not going to do this right now. I'm going to just put the answer on the board. Thank you.